Luke chapter 12, continue, verse number <clears throat> 22. And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life. Disciples. That's the key word. Remember he's been telling disciples, Don't take no purse, don't take no script, don't take no money. Disciples, therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat. Paul went many times without food. Neither for the body. The disciples are all beaten, abused, mistreated, killed. What ye shall put on. Paul said he had a cloak and prison garments, I would assume. The life is more than meat. Oh, look at that. I think Jesus said to Satan about the bread about the Word of God is the diet and the body is more than raiment well in the beginning Adam and Eve were naked and they had all supply and what and what he's countering when he when this parable of the rich man is it ain't about stuff God will take care of you if you're right in God, if you're doing what God tells you to do in your dispensation, the worst thing you can die and end up in Abraham's bosom. Was that so bad for, for, for Lazarus? For a Christian, is it so bad that, okay, you starve to death in agony and pain, and if you're saved, absent from the body, and present with the Lord, what are you worried about? If you die, let's, let's look at verse 12, chapter 12, verse 5. And I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him which after he has killed. God takes life, even if he has someone else do it for him. You're not going to die any sooner than when God has purposed for you to die. Now, you can move that death date by what things you do by sinning. Drinking and smoking will reduce your life. But you're not going to die before God has set a date for you. And when God takes you, he's done with you. Your life is finished. Paul has said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished my course. Every person has a course lost or saved. Now you can finish the worldly course and this, this rich man's course, which is not going to prove of God. Because so, verse 21, so he that lays up treasures for himself is not rich towards God. That's a lost, dying soul that had no nothing for God. Now for me, if today is the last day of my life, God says, after today, I have nothing more for you to do. Then my life has been accomplished. There are, we forget as Americans, there are Christians all over this world that are starving to death today. Some of them are in prisons. Some of them are about, maybe before the day ends, they will lose their head. For being a Christian. And it's not about what you have. The government come, could come today. And confiscate everything. They could tax everything. We don't know what the next president is going to do. We all may. may listen. We all may lose our jobs. Okay. If we lose our job. Let's say the economy completely fails. You better have a loving spouse. And loving children. To put your arms around. And say. You know what. You tried. We still love you. When you've lost everything out in the world and you come home and you ain't got the home, you then you're a failure. But if you got God in a family, that's a lot better what you can put in a U-Haul or a, a, the storage sheds. You know what the problem with some men do? They take their wife and their children and they put them in a storage shed. 
They put them into the government to take care. They put them into the schools to take care of the kids for them. Life is more than me and the body is more than raiment. You know what Paul says sometimes? In those pearls of his life, there were sometimes he went naked. Not because he wanted to strip off of his clothes and go walking down the street praying off his body. But it came to a point, you know what? There was no clothes to wear. Do you remember how Jesus died on that cross? What did he have? It was, I was going to say auctioned off. It was gambled off. Everything that Jesus had, they shot dice, chose straws, pick car, whatever they did to gamble. Are you telling me Jesus on that cross with nothing, absolutely nothing that he had to rent a grave? Naked. You telling me he's a failure? Go up to Jesus' face at the great white throne judgment and tell hey, Jesus, you died with nothing. You're a failure. And we'll see when New Jerusalem comes down and where you are. Consider the ravens. That's a kind of weird. You know when the last time a raven showed up? He was let loose out of the ark and never came back. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouses nor barn. And God feedeth them. How much more are you better than the fowls? Run that back to verse 7. Peter, again. Excuse me, people. In the eyes of God, humans are more credible and more valuable than the animals. Christ died for sinners. He didn't die for animals. And you know what? Jesus ate me. And I bet you as God, I bet you he probably enjoyed it. I bet you Jesus had a favorite food. I guarantee he had something he liked. And it was probably me. I don't know if God would like broccoli and all that. And which of you Talking to the 12 or the 40, 70, excuse me. Which of you, taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit? Uh, no, 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 one cubit. Let's see. About 18 inches. Can you add 18 inches? Can you add an inch? If ye then be not able to. That thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? You you can't even change how high you are. Oh, put high heels on. Yeah, until one of the whatever those things are it breaks. You're still your same height with high heels or not or boot. Consider the lilies. He's a lily of the valley. How they grow. They toil not. They spin not. Yet, I say, it, see, the ravens, we're talking about food, remember? They don't go out there and plow and raise their own corn. Now the lilies. And yet, I say unto you that Solomon, in all his glory, richest man of God, was not a rain like one of these. All right, now the lilies are the, are the, the clothing. You ever seen lilies? They're beautiful. They don't make their own beauty. God did. And Jesus said the lilies are more beautiful than Solomon in all his riches. Can you imagine what that temple looked like when that sun came up? That thing was all gold and silver. That sparkled. Wouldn't you think? Wouldn't you think as the sun was setting on Jerusalem, that place is lit up without electricity? And God, God, Jesus Christ, who is God, says the lilies are beautiful than that. And they didn't do nothing for it. Solomon did all that. The lilies did nothing. And I enjoyed the lilies. If then God so clothed the grass. It's green. Which is today in the field. And tomorrow is cast into the oven. How much more will he, will he clothe you. O ye of little faith. You just see what you just see what Jesus attacked Peter. 
Now he's attacking the tree huggers. People are more important than the plants. Stop saving the plants. Save your soul. Save your soul by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Look at that. Look at all the people Jesus offended so far. Because one guy came up to him and said, Give me my inheritance. You know? You know what the difference between the parable of the prodigal son and this guy? The prodigal son's father is still living. This one, the father's dead. The parable, well, it's not a parable. The, the prodigal son, the brother don't care to afterwards. This one, the son is fighting the son for the money. The, the prodigal son, it ends with feasting and joy. The father is happy. This one, the father is dead and so is the son in the eyes of God. And when the son dies, there will be a lot of people at the reading of the will to see what they get. You ever wonder what, what, the, pro, what the prodigal son, the father gave him his inheritance, right? What else was there to give to the son after the father died? All of it owned the son, the other son. Consider the lilies. If then God so clothe the grass which is today in the field, and tomorrow is cast into the oven. How much more will he clothe you, O little of faith? He's talking to the disciples. The disciples did not have faith. Living with living and, and working and doing with Jesus. They lacked the faith. And Peter says we have more sure word of prophecy. We've got it more than what the apostles had. Seek not ye what ye shall eat. Or what ye shall drink. Neither be ye doubtful mind. Maybe one or two days without would do us. I find that hard to say too. I enjoy food and drink. Of all these things. Do the nations of the world seek after. Uh, Gentiles. I believe Matthew says Gentiles. So you know how this is a Jewish book? He just ranked on us. Gentiles. The Gentiles are our authority. The Gentiles want food. The Gentiles want to drink. The Gentiles want to be clothed. You're not Gentiles. And you know what? I'm not a Gentile either. I'm a child of the king. If I ask my father for a fish, is he going to give me a stone? I don't think so. I think my father is able to take care of me. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after. Seek. We just learned that the other night. Ask, seek, not. And your father, capital F, stone, serpent, bread, knoweth that ye have need of these things. Well, wait, wasn't that the example of the prayer the other day he gave us? He gave us our bread and our daily... In the tribulation, there's going to be, you know, in the tribulation, they got to live off the Father and some of the nations in order to survive. And God told him, I will, I will, I will leave a remnant. When they go, into, when they go off in the book of Acts, it's going to be hard times for them. They are, they are ostracized by the Jews when, by believing on Jesus Christ. They can't work, they can't live, and they can't buy. When a Jew receives Christ as their Savior, they're dead. They're out of business. They don't have a family no more. And when you get when you have a Jewish person in that comes to your church and believes on Jesus Christ, you're going to have to take care of him for a while. You're going to have to raise him up. You're going to have to help him. If the family are orthodox. Especially if he's in the family business, because he won't be in it any longer. And God may use you to provide him with clothing. God may use you to provide him with food. And listen, if Gentiles in the tribulation get rewarded for doing that for a Jew, what do you think you're going to get as a Christian to a Christian brother? 
Is that something we're supposed to do? Okay. The Father knoweth that ye have need. God knows what you need. He made you. He knows you need air, water, and food, and clothing in that order. And I think he's been providing pretty well throughout all the ages of mankind, hasn't he? Doesn't he give rain on, on the just and the unjust? All these things in the nation see. But verse 31, but rather seek ye the kingdom of God. What do you to seek over food, raiment, and, and water? and You're to seek to please God. Your breath on this earth is to say, what does God expect for me and I'm to do it? Today is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. And then go in all the world and preach the gospel. And those that, that will get saved, you give them milk to a newborn babe and you help them to study to show themselves the proof of God. And you raise them up while you're still going out in the world. And preaching the gospel and trying to get other people saved that you may grow them. That's our call today. We're not living to be CEOs. We're not living to to have you know all the great fish in the in the refrigerator. We're here to take the gospel and we're here to birth and to grow Christians. And when that last Christian reaches the point where God wants him, the trump shall blow. Seek ye the kingdom of God. Now for a Jew, that's the land of Israel. That's the that's a spiritual kingdom. That's the holy kingdom. That is that's not birds. That's not trees. That's not dirt. That's God Almighty. That is holiness. That is righteousness. That is perfectness all these things shall be added unto you Paul had a hard time but he still had he still had provision because God wasn't finished with him yet and when God was finished with him he went home to glory fear not little flock and we're going to fear you're going to have fear you're going to look at that checkbook you're going to and Jesus says just fear not just trust in God he'll take care of you he doesn't say don't ever fear fear not you're going to have it it happens we're human Jesus knows that but don't fear fear not little flock for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom Sell that ye have. Now why would he tell the disciples that? Because they're going on the road. <laughs> they're going to have no permanent dwelling. You know what a missionary does? He sells all he has. And he goes. You know what evangelism, evangelistic does? No. Many He's supposed to sell all he has and go. But even Samuel had a place to stay. And he did a circuit. So I wouldn't apply that to evangelism. Unless you just really want to go and sell all you have. And give alms. Provide yourself bags which wax not old. How can you do that? And no, that's not plastic bags today. They didn't have plastic bags back then. And treasures in heaven, in the heavens that fail not. This is a holy, spiritual kingdom of God things. See, we as Christians seek for gold, silver, and precious stones. The disciples in the Jew, in the Jews, Christ hasn't died. He hasn't been. He hasn't been buried. He hasn't risen again. Acts is a dispensational book that that changes. It starts off in one condition, and by the time you get to the end, it's in a whole different condition. The Jews are to seek a physical, literal piece of earth, which will be called the new earth, which is called Israel. 
They're, right now, the Jews are not seeking gold, silver, and precious stone. They're seeking treasures of God in heavens that faileth not, where no thief approaches, neither moth corrupteth. So what God offers you will never decay or break. How's that? It will never need double D40. You'll never need a toolbox again when you get to glory. When the Jews get to the new earth, you won't need a plumber. You won't need a mechanic. You won't need an electrician. And no one will steal. How do you know that the glory uh, the glory is to come in the eternal life? There will be no thieves. They can't do their job. If there was a thief, he wouldn't be able to do his job. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. When you have that debate about God or yourself, who wins? And who wins is where your heart is. That could be over anything. That could be person, place, or thing. Any noun. Including proper nouns. Who wins? God or noun? And I don't know how many nouns there are. I don't know how many proper nouns there are. But who wins? That's where your heart is. Let your loins be girded about and your, and your lights burning. Be dressed and going. Candle. Ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord. When he will return from the wedding, there's the church. He just spoke to you the church age. When the church shall marry to Jesus Christ. He's talking, ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord. When he will return from the wedding. Second advent. When he's got his bride and he's taking her on her honeymoon. The millennium. How long is the honeymoon? A thousand years. Where is the honeymoon? In Jerusalem. There will be room at the end for Jesus. And guess who he'll be bringing with him to the end? His bride. And we'll get the bridal chamber. How's that? And when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. You know those Jews are going to be immediately. That's him. Let's go. Blessed are those servants whom when the Lord when he cometh shall find watching. Why do they be watching? At the seven years of tribulation, Jacob's trouble, great tribulation. Very I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them the servants, the Jews, to sit down to me and will come forth and serve them. After unable to get meat, unable to get water, unless they receive the mark. The few nations that do help them. When Jesus comes, he will relieve them. He will help them. He will strengthen them. He will guide them. They will be his. And he shall come in the second watch. And there's different time. Uh, the first watch. This will be the night watches. 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Second watch. If you come at the second watch. 9 p.m. To midnight the third watch midnight to 3 a.m. the fourth watch 3 a.m. the 6 a.m. cock crowing that fourth watch is when Jesus comes between midnight and 3 a.m. of time that's when Jesus that's the church age when that cock comes and starts crowing in the morning, the sun rises. Not Baal. When the sun rises, that's Jesus coming. If he come the second watch, or come in the third watch, and find them so blessed are those servants. Some of the Jews will not be happy. Some of the Jews will not be blessed because they have received the mark. Jews will receive the mark, some of them. It's a violation of the law for them to do that. 
and to worship that image. You know, you know, in Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the only ones that stood up, weren't they? Where were the rest of the Jews? You mean they, they went on a vacation to Jerusalem? I don't think so. If three of all the captivity, you know Daniel didn't do it. But Daniel already had his time. And the lion's dead. You imagine what proportions will be in Salapitra when Jesus comes? Not very many. They had to fall down before the golden idol when the music started playing. I believe the jazz singer was about a Jewish boy and his family, I think. So I've been told. So. And, though, and this, no. Know this, disciples, that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not suffered his house to be broken. If you knew somebody was planning to come into your house and break in your house, you wouldn't go. you stay home with your gun loaded, the phone in hand. So whoever the good man is, doesn't know when the master's coming even satan doesn't know the angels don't know jesus told us and christians are going to write books and tapes and cds about they know when jesus is coming the good man of this house does not know there is none good no not one That's, that doesn't mean good as in good that's just that's a title that's Satan. Because this is his house. The earth, the world is his house. And Jesus is going to come through the door. Oh, no. Come through the window. Where does that sound? Isn't that Joel? Isn't that Rahab in, in, in uh, Jericho? See? That's going to happen all over again. Though Rahab was a Gentile prostitute, Jesus is going to come and grab the Jews out of Satan's house. A cursed place, Genesis 3, shall we say? And then remove the curse, shall we say? Satan doesn't know when Jesus is coming. You don't. Be therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when ye think not. That's an interesting tribulation passage. They have no idea. The Antichrist has no idea. And the Bible says seven years. How's that one? But then again, we can count our years, and guess what? Our calendars are wrong, aren't they? And Jesus said already, if, if the time would not be shortened for the for the elect. So then Peter said unto him, Lord, speakest thou this parable unto us? Or even to all? So Peter has acknowledged one thing to, to us. Everything said in verse 20, I can't remember the paragraph, 22 has been addressed to him and the disciples, not to the church. And Peter thinks it's a parable. Ye of little faith, Peter didn't get it. But he did tell us something important. The disciple. The addressing of to the disciple. You gotta get that. Do you gotta know who who the Bible's speaking to? It's either speaking to Jews, Gentiles, or the church, or the lost. That's the first context you gotta know in your Bible. Who is this passage speaking to? And if it's not speaking to a Christian, don't apply it to a Christian. And the Lord said, no, it's the Lord said, capital L. The Lord said, who then is the faith, who is that faithful and wise steward? This is the answer to the question, verse 41. Whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household to give them their portion of meat and do see. All right, we've been talking about food and raiment. So the answer is still on that subject. 
Blessed is that servant whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. The Lord said, Blessed is the servant when his Lord, <laughs> you got that? Did you match that? Peter. Talking to Peter, talking to the disciples. The Lord said, When you guys are serving the Lord, blessed is when he cometh and shall find so do. And with the tribulation, when I come, you better be doing what you're supposed to be doing. When the Lord comes, let's apply it for the church. All right? When the rapture happens, you better not be in bed with someone who you do not need to be in bed with. If some wives knew some of the pictures of the, on the computer screens are at work, this statement for the back, I got a picture of, only picture I can get off the internet is my wife, my daughter, and me. You better not be in a play. You better not be where you're not supposed to be on a Sunday morning if it's church service. You better not be in a bar. You better not be purchasing something you ought not be purchasing. That's what he's talking about. Don't you be doing, don't you be where you're not supposed to when the Lord calls us home. You imagine for a Christian, right? Let's say outside the rapture. Let's say your time has come, you die. How about a born again Bible believing Christian getting killed in a bar fight, sitting down and having a drink? Or, not, or say no drink. You're just in a bar with a friend, and a fight breaks out, and you get killed in that bar. Is that a place to die? You couldn't find anywhere. Oh, I was counseling. You couldn't find anywhere else. You had to die there. You got to watch where you are. You got to watch where you're going. You got to watch who you're with. And many don't believe that as Christians, but you'll give an account. You'll give an account of a truth. I say unto you. That he will make him ruler over all that he has. First Peter 5 4. And you can apply that to a Christian. If we're faithful, God's going to give us cities to reign and crowns and call us kings with king over kings as Jesus Christ. But for the Jews, they're going to get possessions of the millennial inheritance. Of the lands which Jesus Christ is king as the nation of Israel was to be set up when a Jew does right he's gonna get acreage he's gonna get uh, uh, I can't think of it. Uh, vineyards he's gonna get uh, trees apple trees orchards he's gonna get crops of grain or whatever by doing right you receive that mark. You follow after Satan. You get the lake of fire. There's no sure ground in the lake of fire. You just swim for eternity. But, and if that servant say in his heart, My, ser my Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to beat the men servants and maidens, and to eat and drink, and to be drunkard. Isn't that what the rich man said over here? He says, so, verse 19, eat, drink, and be merry. Now, I'm going to say something. I'm not going to be happy. James is all against a rich man. In the tribulation period, if you're rich, you're damned. Because there's only one way to be rich. You got that mark and you're worshiping Satan. Because no one can buy from you. No one can sell from you. There's no trading unless you have that mark. Here is someone who's got people under him. He, he, he's got food, he's got drink, and he, he, he's to the excess of being drunk. And he's got the mark when we apply this to the tribulation period. Ha, Lord ain't coming. Give me the mark. And you're damned. That's what the warning is. And the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him, and at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in asunder, 
and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. Where do the unbelievers go? Oh, if you're Catholic, that, that's paradise. It, no, it's hell. Jesus this priest again about hell. There's a place for unbelievers, and it's not with Jesus. It's not with God. And this is not church age. So there will be an eternity. There will be a gathering of unbelievers. And when you can take the church age doctrine that we have, you apply that to hell. And the servant, which knew his Lord's will. That's interesting. He knows the law. Knew the servant's will. And prepared not himself. Himself. Works. Seed works. That's element of work. Salvation. That's not us. Neither did according to his will. Works. Shall be beaten with many stripes. Deuteronomy 25, 1 through 3. Numbers uh, 1530 or 1330. It's hard to tell with that. It was like 1530. You know, that was one of the punishments under the law. Those that whip Paul will be whipped by Jesus. Those that whip Jesus, ooh, I wouldn't want to be in your shoes. I hope you got saved. But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. Check the law out. Are you trying to read the verse in Acts? I think that says 1730. Acts 1730? What was that? For the working of stripes in verse 47. Yeah, I got that note, Acts 1730. I think that's where Paul. The law stated. As far as whipping somebody, you don't whip them to where he's grotesque. Because then people are going to start feeling so. Oh, you whipped them. Look at that. Is it, isn't that just so bad? This is the law we're looking at. And Paul was whipped many times. I, and when he's talking about his pearls, he'll tell you how many times he w received whips in his lifetime. Jesus received more whips than. The law prescribed because he was whipped by the Romans. For unto whomsoever much is given, and Leviticus five seventeen, of him shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much of him, they will ask the more. Leviticus five seventeen. There's the law. So this is talking about dispensation of the law. I am come to send fire on the earth. I thought he came to send love and peace. Isn't that what the angels said? Yeah. After he returns and settles his kingdom, then there's love and peace. When he comes at the second advent, read what it says for the second advent. Fire and a sword comes out of his eyes and his mouth. That's not that little baby. I'm looking up you. What says verse? You. No. U, U, D, U. It says verse 51. I was hoping we get the revelation where Jesus is coming. 1251. I am come to send fire on the earth, and what will I, if it be already kindled? You've already started the fire by rebelling against God. But I have a baptism to be baptized with. This is not water. And how am I straightened till it be accomplished? Death. He has a death to pronounce judgment upon people with that fire when he comes back he's burning people alive suppose he that I am come to get peace on earth there's that verse 
All right. Peace on earth and goodwill. Christmas time. Peace on earth. I tell you nay, but rather division. That's not on a Christmas card. For from henceforth there shall be five in one house divided. Tribulation. One woman was making meal. One taken, the other left. Two were out in the field. One. Three against two and two against three. I wouldn't want to live in that house. That that house is today, I bet. Concern. The father shall be divided against the son. The son against the father. The mother against the daughter. The daughter against the mother. The mother-in-law against the daughter-in-law. And the daughter-in-law against the mother-in-law. Jewish rival, Jewish civil war in a Jewish home. Because someone wants to believe on Christ. Someone wants to do right. He said also to the people. Now we're addressing to the people. We're, we're done with the disciples. Now to the people. When ye see a cloud rise out of. Turn page. The West. Straightway ye say there is coming a shower, and so it is. I mean, that's weather report, weather knowledge of Israel. I guess when you see a cloud coming from the West in that region, there's rain. And when you see the south wind blow, see the wind blow? The trees, the, the awnings, the tumbleweeds, whatever. Some people have a problem with that verse because they say, "See the you can see when the effects thereof." We got a wind chime. I bought my wife. You can see and hear the wind. It's beautiful. There will be heat, and it comes to pass. So when the wind blows south in Jerusalem, you're going to get heat. Ye hypocrites! Oh, jeez, talking to the people. This is not to the disciples. He turns to the people. You hypocrites! Isn't he nice? What would Jesus do? You're so mean when you preach to us. Ye can discern the face of the sky and of the earth. How is it that you do not discern this time? 19, 42 to 44, 1 Corinthians 1, 19 to 27. Yay! See, there's that positive of Jesus. Yay! <laughs> He's already made them mad. Yea, and why even of your own selves judge ye not what is right? Does not need to be judged. When thou goest with thy adversary to the magistrate, as thou art in the way, give diligence that thou mayest be delivered from him. Lest he hail thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and the officer cast thee into prison. It's two people taking you to court. They're going to court. One's guilty. You better get things right with the, with the one that you're guilty against. Because if you come to before the court, you're going to get no mercy if you're guilty. Better get mercy from that guy who you offended. Get it right with him. All right? Let's get it down too. You better get your sins settled right here, right now, before you meet God with those sins because if you face God with your sins there is no mercy if you if you as a Christian stand before the judgment seat of Christ and you got sins it burns you cry I don't care you lost it God will not give you time out God will not give you a second chance you cannot press the button and redo the game it's gone. It's burnt. Gold, silver, precious stone? Okay, you get. What's ashes? You don't get. You stand before God, the great white throne judgment, and you got sins. The judge says, guilty. Go to hell. Blubbering, sobering, getting down there. Oh, Lord, we're going to win. I never knew you. You reject Jesus Christ, and read Jesus Christ will reject you. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you are. I don't care what you did. 
whether saved or lost, if you face God with your sin, you're in trouble. One to a loss of rewards, one to a loss off into eternity. You better tell those people about the gospel. You better go in the world and preach Jesus Christ saves. And you better take that Christian and raise him up to know, hey, God expects things from you. After that, that's their own choice. If they believe on Jesus, amen, glory to God, raise them up. If they reject Jesus Christ, that's their fault, not yours. If you tell that Christian, listen, God expects you to learn. God expects you to read the Bible. God expects you to pray. God expects you to go out and win people to Jesus Christ. If they don't do it, you told them you did what's right. It's their condemnation, not yours. But you better teach them. You better tell them. Sin is a serious consequence. Sin is the only thing that will affect you eternity. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Eve. But I can't blame. I was born of a woman. I'm a sinner. There's no excuse. I got 1 John 1 9. I tell thee, thou shalt not depart thence till thou hast paid the very last might. You know how scary that verse is? If you have not done what God has told you to do as far as salvation, you keep paying for your sins. And when you're in hell, you're in there for eternity. You don't ever get out, the Bible says. So you can't pay for your own sins. That's scary. 